Greetings, sisters and brothers. This weekend is Trinity Weekend. We celebrate the Holy Trinity, and the title of our message is Trinity, God in Us. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So, um, last Saturday, for the first time, some of us from our Church Beyond the Walls community, which is the street church some of us are involved in, we went down to Burnside Park in Providence um, to just be present there in the park with some of the people 
in our community and we had made some care packages um, and we included prayer books and rocks with crosses on them and gift cards to a local eatery and um, just really and masks for their safety and just wanted to touch in and let people know hey we're we're with you um, and we before we uh, later in the week after we decided to do this we found out that there was going to be a protest there uh, at the same time in the park um, protesting the um, police killing of an unarmed black man, George Floyd, which we have all heard about and tragically seen um, the, the horrible video. So I had kind of wanted to go to that protest anyway, so I was able to do both in a sense. But at one point after the, when the protest was, was dispersing and people were very, um, it was a peaceful protest, the crowds were dispersing. I overheard these two women talking about what a difficult week it had been and how horrible um, the whole de that whole death um, had been. And then one of them said something like, "Well, thank God, you know, God is in our heavenly Father is in heaven and." Um, and so we'll just leave everything in God's hands. And I couldn't help but think of something my husband always says. And my husband, Ted, um, you need to know, is, is new to the Christian faith. Um, he was baptized as an adult 16 years ago. He grew up with no faith tradition. And so 16 years ago, decided to be baptized and really has had this spiritual awakening and, and turned his life around, let Christ turn his life around. So, um, but even at the beginning, he always said to me uh, about many Christians, he said, don't they get it? He said, they talk about God in the heavens, like God in the sky, as though God is like way up there, separate from us. Don't they see, don't they get it that God is a part of us and we are a part of God, like you can't separate it. And indeed, we can't. Um, one of my favorite mystics is St. Teresa of Avila, lived in the 1500s in Avila, Spain. Passionate Christian mystic. And to her is attributed this beautiful saying where she says, um, Christ, or I think she says God actually, God has no hands today with which to reach out and help someone but our hands, no feet with which to walk and share the good news of forgiveness and new life with which to walk, but our feet, no eyes to look out at this world and see the needs and the hurts and the wounds of this world, but our eyes, no hearts to bring God's healing and love to this world but our hearts. And that's a very powerful uh, prayer of St. Teresa of Avila. Well, sisters and brothers, um, this weekend we celebrate uh, the Holy Trinity. And for those of us who are Trinitarian Christians, we think of God as three in one and one in three, as Father and Son and Holy Spirit. But um, my final class years ago, 10 years ago, when I got my doctorate at the Lutheran Seminary, my final class was an independent study with uh, the theology professor, John Hoffmeyer. And my final paper was on the Holy Trinity, a 45-page paper. I will not... Um, 
I will not bore you by sharing all of that paper. However, um, what my paper, what I entitled it is Trinity, God as Relationship. Because think about it. Um, the first part of the Trinity that we call Father. Father is a relational word. You can't be a father without having children. Second person of the Trinity, the Son, Jesus. You can't be a son without having a parent. That too is a relational word. And the Holy Spirit, which we went into depth with last week on Pentecost, the the breath of life, the wind of creation and destruction, the, the Holy Spirit um, is considered that love which binds the Father to the Son and the Son to the Father. And so in Trinitarian Christian tr teachings, we teach that um, we that God, even within God's own being, is relational. And God's all about desiring to have a relationship with us. And the last several weeks, we've been hearing these readings from the Gospel of John where, where God says, where Christ says, I, as the Father is in me and I am in the Father, so I am in you and you are in me. So the Trinity is about our relationships. And just as my husband said, you cannot separate it. You cannot have, you know, this God in the heaven and, and without realizing that this God is in us. And so at Church Beyond the Walls, every time we go out into the park, to be present with people and to have our, under normal conditions, our worship service, but even just last Saturday, to be present with people, we pray this prayer before we go. We pray that we will see God's presence, see the face of Christ in all we encounter, but also that we will reflect that face of Christ to all we encounter. And that's what this Trinity weekend is all about, that, that we can't separate it. God who is in the heavens is in me and in you and in absolutely everyone, all we encounter. And so um, I, I thought we'd briefly mention the readings for this week because the word Trinity is not even found in the Bible, but there are three places in the Bible where it speaks of the Trinity. And the first is in Genesis 1, the story of creation, uh, where we have God, the Father, or the Creator speaking, and, and all creation comes to being, into being. We have, as the beginning of the Gospel of John tells us, Jesus is that word that the Father speaks and brings all things into creation. And then the Holy Spirit is that wind or breath that hovers over the waters and, and participates in bringing forth all creation. So that's our first reading for today. And then later, in that same Genesis 1, it tells us that the climax, the pinnacle of God's creation is when God creates human beings. And it says, and God created us in God's own image and likeness, male and female, God created us. Every human being is created in God's own image and likeness. The second place where the Holy Trinity is uh, mentioned is in today's second reading from 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 through 13. And I love this reading. Um, St. Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of peace will be with you. 
And then he closes by saying, and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And that word communion, union, oneness, God in us and us in God. And then our gospel reading for today is from Matthew 28, Jesus's final words to his disciples, what's called his greatest commission, his great commission. He says, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the ages, in Greek, to the end of the eons. Okay, so that's where we get our baptismal formula, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, sisters and brothers, um, this week has been a very challenging week, the last two weeks. Um, again and again, we see that video in our playing in our minds, and I think how tragic that it was. Uh, one of the main videos was, was taped by a 17-year-old. And I think that 17-year-olds should not be witnesses to such, such things. But we see that terrible video of a white police officer kneeling, kneeling on the neck of an unarmed black man. And what, what really haunted me are how George Floyd repeatedly said, please, please, I can't breathe. Please, I can't breathe. Please, let me stand. I can't breathe. Uh, we had just last week um, focused on the Holy Spirit, the breath of life. And that officer stayed um, and looked down, stayed on his neck until his breath, that breath of life, had gone, had departed from him. Um, if we really see that it's not separate, that God is not some separate being in the heavens, that God is in us and we are in God, would it even be possible if people, if all people got that, for one person to kneel on the neck of another until he took away that breath of life. No. Um, that police officer did not acknowledge that, that imago Dei, that image and likeness of God in this man, George Floyd. Um, what I find more difficult, if I'm truthful, I, I can see Christ in that. In fact, it's, a, it's a, an example of crucifixion. I, George Floyd um, on the ground in his, in his suffering and in his death. But I personally find it difficult to see the face of God in that police officer. And even in those other police officers who at one point three of them were kneeling on this man and at other times just stood by and watched. Um, and yet that is sort of the brilliance of Dr. Martin Luther King. Dr. Martin Luther King added a whole new dimension to this um, to this battle that we wage against racism when he said that racism not only harms black Americans, persons of color, racism harms indelibly the perpetrators. Um, racism uh, harms our, our souls, the 
core of who we are as human beings created in God's own image and likeness. And so there is such a need for healing um, on both sides. And that's where Dr. King, I think, really gave this a whole new dimension. So sisters and brothers, since this George Floyd incident in my East Greenwich church, which is largely white, I've had wonderful, wonderful church people calling me and saying, what can we do that was such so terrible? What can we do? Um, and um, and so we, we are going to have um, a study group. We're going to read together the book, White Fragility. And we have a, a social justice group called Beloved Community after Dr. King's um, called he came up with that concept of beloved community. And we're going to use that book, White Fragility, as a launching off point. But I, I just want to share a conversation I had with a, a wonderful man from our church around my age who called me and was very concerned and wanted to know what he could do. And, and he said he that at work, sometimes people tease him about being um, you know, a white male and about how much power and privilege he has as a white male. And he said, Pastor Linda, you know me. Do you think I'm racist? And 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 I heard this aching in his voice and, and I said to him, no, I don't think you're racist, but what's going on in our country is bigger than us as individuals. Individual people uh, might not be racist, although some certainly are, as that police officer kneeling on another human being's neck was indeed racist. So some people are indeed racist. But what we need to work on is this, this whole intricately connected um, matrix of s interlocking systems that have been in existence, some of them for hundreds of years, uh, some of them for less time, but the systems that have been, been created mostly by white men, so the systems themselves are indeed racist. They were designed to benefit the ones who created them. So I shared with this wonderful man from our church, I said, well, I was trying to explain the systemic level of racism. And I said, you know, when I was a teenager, I, I went to a, a large youth gathering in New England. It was somewhere in like, I think it was at UMass Amherst. And it was um, a bunch of teenagers, hundreds of teenagers from all over New England gathered together, and the theme was prejudice and racism. And I remember we did an exercise. We had about 100 kids lined up in a, in a line in like a gymnasium-sized room, and they gave us a bunch of questions. And they'd say, well, if this applies to you, if you've experienced this in your life, take a step forward. Or if you've experienced this in your life, take a step back. And so some of the experiences were very positive. If you've had these blessings or privileges or good experience, you know, take a step forward. But if you've had these obstacles or these negative experiences, you know, take a step back. Well, I was about 15, and after like 10 minutes of this activity, I looked around the gymnasium, and it was pretty glaring that all of the black and brown people were 20 steps behind me, and all of the white males were like 10 or 20 steps ahead of me, and it was you know, to do an exercise like that with your body as a teenager where you're stepping forward and you're stepping back, it was really eye-opening. It was transformational for me to see how my privileges um, that I had in my life because of the color of my skin. 
And I explained that to this wonderful man from my church. Because again, racism is bigger than individuals. However, we all certainly need to um, reflect and examine our, our own hearts and minds and souls in terms of uprooting the racism that we may have there. But we also need to become very aware that these systems need to be dismantled. We need to create new systems uh, so that what happened in Minnesota cannot happen again. Well, sisters and brothers, um, this weekend, in addition to being Trinity weekend, is a very special weekend in the life of my community because we have a new woman my age who um, is going to be baptized on Sunday late afternoon in the ocean. She was supposed to be baptized at our Easter vigil. Um, and of course, we had to cancel church and everything. So she's been waiting for quite some time. To, for this for this very important day. And she decided she wanted to do it on Trinity weekend because she's so taken with this idea of God uh, in relationship, us in God and God in us. And then because of that, seeing God's presence in every human being. So when I work with adults who are being baptized, I love it because... Adult baptism is very dramatic, especially in the ocean. When you plunge someone under the water, St. Paul says, we are dying. We are dying to our old selves, to our sinful selves, to our old way of life. And when we rise from the baptismal waters, we are rising with Christ into new and transformed life. Every time I baptize an adult, I, even just in witnessing it and participating, I feel reborn. I feel that transformation continuing to take place in myself. So sisters and brothers, um, as difficult and as challenging as these weeks have been, perhaps God is calling us as people of faith to die to our old selves, to die to our old ways of looking at things and seeing things, to die to these old sinful, sinful systems so that we can rise to new and transformed life. And hopefully we can all have those epiphany moments where we see that God is not just up there in the heavens separate from us, but God is indeed in everyone we encounter. And may we treat all that we encounter with that rever reverence, that respect, that agape God-like love with which God has first loved us. Amen. Thank you.